Hi everybody, welcome back. And now I'm ready for part three. Part three will entail painting the flower. And that's the exciting part for me. I love that part. Once I get the flower, I'll paint it. I'll go back in and work on the background. But for now, it is time to paint the flower. Yay! Excited? Okay, stay with me, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Give me a thumbs up, then don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. I decided, you along with me, that I was going to use magnesium, uh, manganese, I always say magnesium, manganese blue and permanent rose for these petals down here. So down here in this area. So I'm going to paint that, but most of the mixture is going to be on here. So if I put the blue down first on this yellow, it's going to give me green, and I don't want green. So I'm going to put permanent rose on first and just start painting this. And it's dry. So this little area in here, that's stamens in there. I painted that one yellow, and I didn't really want that one yellow. So while I can, I'll show you how to lift out. I have this yucky little brush that is absolutely mushed on the ends and just looks terrible, but it's the best little brush to lift out colors. So I'm just wetting that area. Not scrubbing hard at all, just a little bit so that I can lift out some of that yellow. I really didn't want that yellow there. That lifted out more, so that's good. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit more yellow down in there, and that was Nagamba or um, what was that? Uh, Hansu Yellow Deep. I really want that to stay and have that little bit more glow in there. Oh, and what I clean my brush off every time I dip it in water. I scrape it on the side, then I put it in this. This is a sponge, and it just takes more of the moisture out of my brush. And then the metal part here, if you've got too much water on that, I've got this little piece of sponge on this, and I just can clean that off real real quick too. I spray this to get this started because if it's really dry I can't dry my brush off very well. But that way I know about how much water I've got on my brush. It's just a habit that I formed. So I dip it in. I dip it in the water. I go like that. And usually that's about the right amount of water I need. Notice I haven't really paid attention to what my drawing is yet. It's just, I'm just going over everything with the color. And once I get all this in, then I will go back in and work more petal by petal. And as I do that, you 
may want to fast forward or I may choose to fast forward this and not fast forward but to speed it up so that you don't have to watch every second of me putting this on and and if I do speed it up then you can go back up to that little wheel where the settings are and you can slow down the video so that it's not so fast it won't be smooth it will be kind of jerky but you can still slow it down so that you can better see what I'm doing if you want to watch every little step here. Not everybody does, and I, I understand that. But some people love to watch every little step. I get that. I'm one of those people that likes every little step, especially if it's on a technique that I don't know. So this area down here, I'm going to, I think I'm going to put a little bit of manganese blue in there, which is different than what I've done on this other area. But these are more in shadow, and I want them to be more um, lavender, kind of a lavender lilac color, more purple in it. Now up in here, I think I will use more of the permanent rose in that area so that I've got a little bit darker pinks on the outside edges of these. So rather than doing everything, I'll pick and choose the petals that I want to do with just a lighter pink and that way it will be a little bit a softer pink not quite so dark I don't want that one quite that dark add a little bit more water to that so this is my palette again it's my mixture that I'm working on here and I will just add water to it as I need it to be thinner more diluted just start going around the backs of these. I think I'll start down here in this area and make this a little bit pinker. Then I can work my way up so that I don't get as lost. I almost feel like I should number these because there's so many petals on this. And I can darken up some of these where the flowers are darker in the center at the base of the, the petal. I could even put a little bit of manganese blue in that one because it's quite dark. See, I say I'm not going to do that and then I go ahead and do it. because this is all wet it's going to flow up into there and not give me any hard edges that's because it's wet and wet so it's going to start out dry and then I add my paint to it now that's wet so now I can add a little bit of the manganese blue and now I'm painting wet into wet and that's pretty blue. So a little bit more pink into that. Got quite a bit of water in there on this soak some of that out. Let it mix a little bit in there. 
I do a lot of tilting because I like to watch it mix on my paper a little bit more. My next, my next petal, this one in here. Because I don't have yellow on this, I will be able to erase a lot of the pencil marks. A little bit more manganese blue in there. And I may have to go back in and darken this up considerably, but I don't want to go too fast on how dark it's going to get. I'd rather do it in layers. <laughs> Having it wet and just touching it like that allows me to not just paint every brush stroke. They mix on their own and form these beautiful nuances that you can't get if you mix everything in your palette. So I've mixed the lavender and I put it on here. Then I've got just a lavender petal. There's no, no little bit of seeing the pink in there. There's no seeing a little bit of the blue in there or a little bit of the yellow in there. I want to see those different colors. Or I can wait until it's completely dry and layer them and that way you see them in a different way. You see, because I use only transparent watercolors, you can sort of see the white of the paper if I just go in and put a purple color on there, you won't be able to see the white of the paper. I, I want it to have a feeling of the petal being thin and soft, soft to the touch, soft to look at. Letting the colors mix on my paper allows me to have that feeling better. doesn't have as much of the lavender in it as these others do. Tad bit. Now since all those are wet, I'm going to come over here to this one and work it while I can. Has a little bit of lavender in there. Can you tell how light that is as far as the color goes? And then it's going to dry even lighter. So I will be doing this in quite a few layers so that I can maintain. I don't want to go too dark too fast. I want to try and keep it as light as possible and build up the colors. If I do it as light as possible, building up the colors, then I don't already have it so dark that I can't put another layer on without making it go even dark, darker. So I'm doing it just a little bit at a time. Yeah, I gotta stay away from that 
little one that I just did because it's wet and this will bleed into that or that will bleed into this one. But it got pink in here so I think I will go in and put some lavender or make that a little bit more lavender there. I would say if this is your first time painting a peony or flowers, don't start with a peony because they are tricky because there's so many petals and little nuances to those petals and it, it can, be, can be a little tricky and confusing. The, the first painting that I did, well probably the third or fourth painting that I did when I first started, I started with a peony. And I drew it and drew it and drew it. I did it freehand. And I was very proud of it. This was like 12 years ago. And it looked, it looked great. And I had not used a lot of masking. So I wasn't too sure about the masking. Wasn't, I didn't take the time to make sure that my masking fluid was good and that the paper that I used was good so that when I put the masking fluid on the paper it wouldn't tear the paper when I removed the masking fluid or that I wouldn't be able to get the masking fluid off. I had no idea how long to leave it on or how long I could leave it on and well, it was, a, it was a huge fail. It was such a great drawing that I did. I was so proud of it. But man, did I mess it up. The masking fluid that I had was not good. The paper that I bought was cheap. And that's not a good scenario. You want to have the best quality of paper you can afford. I use arches. 140 pound cold press. That is my go-to paper. You can use either side of it. If I'm doing portraits, I use the front side, which is smoother. And the back side is rougher. So when you're checking the paper, you take the paper in your hand and you go like this or you look for the logo, the embossed logo, which is down, always down in the lower right-hand corner of the paper. And if you can read it, even though it may say French or something, but if you can read it properly left to right, then you know you're on the front side. However, once you make, those, make the paper smaller into smaller pieces, you're going to lose that logo. So if you always want to paint on the front side, turn your paper over, make a huge X corner to corner on your paper, and then if you cut your paper into smaller pieces or tear your paper into smaller pieces, which is what I do, I don't cut it, then wherever you see the lines, you know you've got the back. I stretch my paper and I put it on this board and if you want to know about this board you can see my video on how to make the watercolor board. It's very lightweight. It's made out of um, gator board or um, it's a half inch gator foam and then I seal it with Liquitex and once it's sealed, and I do that two or three times on both sides, so my other side looks the same, so I can actually have two paintings going at a time. 
um, or I can be working on one while the other one's drying, whichever. It, it's waterproof, it's durable, I can use them for years and years and years and years. Some of these boards I've been using as long as I've painting, which once I started using those boards, um, I've been painting for about 10 years on them. They've got all these staple marks because I've sealed it with the Liquitex medium. Then it, it seals it. I put two coats on, it seals them. I draw these lines on so I've always got straight edges because you don't want to paint a crooked picture. Um, I put the tape on the edges so it protects the edges. I also put, so I've got the, the foam cord board and then I use a cheap mat, a white mat. Um, the cheapest one I can buy. doesn't have to be museum quality or anything, but the mat is the only kind of thing that you can use. If you use a poster board or something like that to put over it, it, it won't work. I use the mat board. I seal it to the foam core using the Liquitex gel medium. I let that dry. Then I seal it on the top. I let that dry. And I put the tape around the edges and I'm good to go. And then I can use it, I can take it any place I want. It's lightweight, it's easy, it's perfect. A lot of people don't stretch their paper. You don't have to stretch your paper if you don't mind the buckling and... Th I can have paper on each side. I might take a day and just do a whole bunch of boards, put paper on either side, get them all ready, and then I may not have to do it for a month if it takes me that long to use up all that paper, which sometimes it would and sometimes it wouldn't. It works great for me. Anyway, I've got those videos out there if you want to watch them. So I think what I'm going to do, now that you've seen me start this, I'm just going to paint. I'm not going to do a lot of talking. I'm just going to start painting this, keep doing what I've been doing. If I change something, then I will stop and, of course, let you know what I've done. Just for the sake of speeding this process up, I'm going to paint, and I'll probably speed the video up during that time, just so that it's not a huge, long video. I'm going to just start painting, so I'll talk to you soon.
So I'm back to just tell you a couple of things. If you remember back early on when I was deciding on these colors, I was going to go up here in this lighter area with the cobalt blue and permanent rose and down here in this area go with the manganese blue and permanent rose. Well, I kind of forgot that along the way. So I'm going, like, because I have a few areas in here where I use manganese, and it's not terrible, it's, it's still very pretty, but I'm going to go back to the cobalt and permanent rose up here in some of these where it's a little bit darker in here, just to give me a little bit more depth in there. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know. And that's all I'm going to do for today.